It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a lovely day for a neighbor. Would you be my, could you be my, won't you be my neighbor? Hi neighbor. I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we have a cool tutorial for you guys about speed lines. So let's check it out. So before we start, I want to let you know I'm making a preset for this. And I've gotten requests for some older versions, and the oldest version I have on this machine is 2015.3. So I'm going to make one for 2017 and one for 2015.3. So normally I make this with some stroked lines. I just have one going out and one going in, but that leaves you with a hard edge right here. And what I like about when you make this effect in Illustrator is that you can actually round stuff. So you can actually have this like curve out and then curve back in. And so that was one of the goals I set when I was trying to make this effect. But the main goal of course is to have it be able to be added to other elements. So let's take a look at this. So first we have our art layer and that's where you're gonna put your art. And I know that's really confusing, but it's the best I could do. I hope you appreciate it though, because that took me like an hour to actually get into the preset. But consequently, there'll be a little mini tutorial in this tutorial and a little write up on the site about how to do that so that you don't waste an hour of your time. You can also add this to your own layer that already has art in it. Just make sure that all of that is grouped and merged. It needs to be merged so that the effect works. That means you actually have to have this merged. You can't use the reverse path direction trick I showed you guys before. And then since I'm rounding everything, I had a problem. My logo started rounding. As you can see, it would look like this, right? Not terrible, but this is, you know, sharp. So I came up with a little ingenious solution and I'm gonna toot my own horn. So screw it, accept it. And so what I did was I added around corners and basically what I did was pre-round everything. I rounded it by like one pixel, which obviously doesn't really do much at all, but it makes sure that this is already technically rounded so it can't be rounded again. So after I finished recording this tutorial, I added a couple of things. So I'm gonna put that in here real quick. So you can actually click to add this right to your existing art. It actually has a merge and all that stuff built in. This one doesn't really show it, I guess, but what you need to do is go into the art layer here and just drag this up before this merge paths. If you don't have a merge in there, you can just drag both. That'll just make sure that these corners don't curve. As you can see, if I take this out and put it back into here, it'll curve again. So just drag that up, put it in there. If you don't have this merge paths, you can drag the one that's here. You might have to change its setting, but set as is and you can either leave this in or just delete it if you delete it obviously it changes the random a little bit i've also added a flip checkbox so if you want to put it in the other side you can you just have to change your x position move it over there if you need to you got to change your cutout length all right back to our regularly scheduled programming and that's it for the art layer all right so let's close this up and then we have lines so we have two sets of lines the ones that stick out and the ones that cut out so you can see here lines one lines two these are again merged that's important, don't delete these merges. So part of making this effect repeatable is that I wanted all of this stuff to have sliders and stuff that can modify it. So you can move the X position, you can move the Y position. So you can see if you get too close to the corner, that's already rounded, it's not gonna round anymore. So just be aware of that. That's not my limitation, it's just After Effects. You can change how random the length is, you can change the random seed, you can change how much it wiggles, you can change the cutout length, you can change the line weight, so you can have it look like that if you want. So obviously this is made with a repeater. You can actually change the copies right in here. We can go with four copies. We can change the gap. So all of these things are linked to those repeaters and to the rectangles that build it. So it's all pretty simple linking. So if you really want to know how that works, you can look through the project file or, or apply the preset. But I'm just going to explain a little bit more about how things work. So the line weight actually controls a lot of stuff. If you change its size back to like 20, we'll put this gap a little bit bigger and move this Y up. So obviously the line weight controls the weight of the line. It also determines how far down the next set of the cutout goes because the cutout is really just the continuation of this line. And it also determines the rounding. So if we drop this down to like two copies, make the gap a little bit bigger, move the Y down, because why not? And then we make this line weight bigger. You can see that it rounds a lot more. It's gonna get a little weird in here because we're not very far in this gap. Uh, if we go X a little bit over. So it would keep this to a sensible line weight for your subject. So if you look at this, you can see there's kind of a central point where these things cross. And that's kind of the ideal spot where you want to have this on your edge. All of the lines that stick out really kind of start from here and go that way. And they're randomly scaled with the wiggle paths. And then all of the cutout lines start over here. They randomly scale this way according to the wiggle paths. The random length controls that for both of the wiggles. The wiggle speed is the same for both. And the random seed, I believe, is actually the same for both as well. So the only other thing that I haven't really explained how it works is this offset, and that basically makes this at an angle. So you can't really see it easily, but now these go this way. 
You can change it the other way. They can go the other direction. So that's if you have like an angled surface, like an A or something like that, and you wanted to put this on there, it would still work. And obviously you can see if you move this into weird, funky ways, you can get it to go through the object, which if you want to animate this to do that, go right ahead. It's a little weird, but hey, you do you. So I'm gonna set this offset back to zero, move this X position back over, and that's that. So the next thing is we have a loop that I made for the GIF that you guys might've seen. And that basically turns the wiggles to zero and you take the temporal phase and spatial phase and you animate those until you get something that looks kind of good. And that'll allow you to actually loop these things if you need that. I'll leave this in here. So if you guys want to see how that works, you can check it out. All right, so let me show you guys real quick how to do the preset. So I wanted to name these because you know that makes it actually easy to use it. So what I found is that you need to select your contents of your shape the actual main subgroups on your shape and effects and things like merge paths and whatever that are just directly under the contents because basically everything inside these things will be saved if you select the main one. And then you select your effects and that's it. Before, I don't know why, but I had to actually click each one of these things, but not the slider, just the title and it would save it. But I guess that depends on how you're saving all your stuff. Maybe I finally figured it out, I don't know. But hopefully this information helps you. All right, so let's move on. Let's show you how to actually do this thing. I drag this battery down here, I right click, create shapes from vector layer, delete this guy, click on this again, hit G from again tool, click on one of these points, hold command, select all of them, hit command T, make this big, hit enter. So just to make this a little easier on myself, I'm going to get rid of this centerpiece. So I'm going to go in here and this has like a bunch of different groups. Well, I guess not a bunch, but a couple, you know, whatever. I'm going to click this, get rid of that. It's the wrong one. I'm going to click this, get rid of that. I'm gonna open this up. There's already a merge here. I'm actually gonna move this into here, get rid of this group. Uh, then we're gonna add a little rounding here, round corners into this, make sure it's in here. We're gonna open that up, set it to one. It's, everything's already rounded, so it probably wouldn't matter, but if I wanted to keep this straight or whatever, you don't wanna have a client be like, hey, my logo is a little, uh, a little round there. All right, so now that this is all set, this is in a group. If it's not in a group, you just select whatever, just hit Command G and that'll group your stuff. I'm gonna undo that though, because mine's already in a group. All right, I'm gonna open up my effects and presets window because I actually don't have it open in this view for some reason. Click this down, user presets, workbench, speed lines. Might as well close this back up. That's why it's not in this view. All right, move my exposition over. I'm gonna change the cutout length, make that a little smaller. I'm gonna change the, change the line length down. When you make new copies, they go from the center. So I'm just gonna do this. This shape isn't exactly in the center as far as that goes. So I'm going to move this Y position down and maybe make this a little longer. Set this to four so it's crazy. There you go. Uh, we're getting this little gap here. I'm just going to take away one copy. We'll go eight. Move it down a little bit. There we go. So now speed lines is easy. I was thinking about scripting in little dots in here, but I haven't really figured out a good way to do that yet. But for now, if you want a little dot or something popping in, just add it with a shape. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I kind of like it. It's cool that I was actually able to make something scriptable for it and I have fun. So that's just another quick thing for your tool bag. All right, as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And as always, make sure you check out workbench.tv. You're gonna have to if you actually wanna download the preset. Would you be my, could you be my, won't you be my neighbor? Ha, I forgot I had a trolley graphic. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye.